Good afternoon and welcome to this session on Amazon Business. Uh, Amazon Business is one of the lesser known uh, uh, initiatives at Amazon and I'm sure a lot of you might have heard about it, but maybe you have not taken the dive yet. And the intention of my lightning talk is to give you a quick introduction, a bit of motivation why you should be adding Amazon Business to the application suite you are working with. And then also a bit of deep dive into how to use SP API features to enable those use cases. So if I can find my slider, I'll get started. Uh, my name is Chanjal, and I work as a manager solutions architect in the selling partner dev services organization. Uh, I work with uh, a number of uh, solution architects and integration project managers, and we have been working on uh, uh, fine-tuning and streamlining features for Amazon Business when it comes to the SP API platform. Uh, a little about um, uh, motivating you to build for Amazon Business Customer. We'll start with a number of reasons why you should think about adding features for Amazon Business in your app suite. Uh, and then after that, I'll take a deep dive and we'll, give in, uh, we'll go into six use cases uh, and how to map them into the existing SP API um, endpoints. Uh, I'll, leave, uh, I'll leave this presentation with a pointer uh, to uh, for you to follow up with my team. So um, with that, let me get started uh, with a bit of background on Amazon Business. So we have been uh, uh, in the market since 2015, eight years now, and beyond the US, we have expanded to another eight countries uh, across multiple continents. So beyond the US and Canada, we are in Europe and also Japan and India. Uh, we have already reached uh, annualized sales of $35 billion this year. So uh, you can imagine that this is hard to ignore now and we are getting to the point of inflection and that critical mass that you would like to actually think seriously about getting started. If you have sellers who have been talking to you that they want to see some applications, then this is the right point in time for you to actually start thinking seriously about adding features. Uh, to give you a perspective of how many uh, customers we are targeting, so today we have more than six million active customers. And uh, by default, actually, the selling, uh, the selling partners who are on Amazon.com, they are automatically listed on the Amazon Business Store. So basically, you already have yet an additional channel where you are able to sell your seller's products. Uh, we have uh, uh, SMBs as our uh, customers, but also large enterprises and institutions. And of the Fortune 100 companies, we have 96 who are already uh, our customers and partners. Um, we have built in seamless integrations with a number of procurement platforms, ERP platforms, and payment systems. And for organizations, for smaller organizations that do not have e-procurement, we support purchasing directly on Amazon.com. Having said that, uh, uh, I wanted to actually give you a brief background as to um, uh, why Amazon Business uh, uh, is, uh, uh, how Amazon Business fits together in the SP API suite. So I'll go to these six use cases and I'll start with actually uh, the very basic concept of business price and quantity discount. So in order for any developer to get started uh, with doing application development for Amazon Business, we need to understand the concept of what is business price and quantity discount. Uh, coming from a background in B2C, uh, the big difference you will see here is that you are helping your sellers price for the retail market, for the B2C market. And uh, I would like to actually explain the concept in a bit of detail as to how do you want to encourage volume purchasing and bulk guidance for those sellers. Uh, I'll move on to um, uh, rule-based automated repricing, talking about uh, what you already might have used in terms of any offer change notification, but in the B2B context. Uh, later, I will also talk about product recommendations that you can uh, give your sellers with a couple of report types that we have introduced exclusively for those B2B sellers. I'll touch upon multi-location inventory, uh, talk about delivery experience, how does it uh, differentiate from the delivery experience for the consumer segment, and last but not the least, I will touch upon package hierarchy because essentially this is for uh, bulk listing and purchasing, so I'll talk about uh, uh, the way Amazon handles units, case packs, and pellets. So uh, talking about uh, 
Business pricing and quantity discounts. So business prices essentially are meant to incentivize business customers. You want to actually set a business price on a product that you're already selling to retail customer, but at a sharper, crisper, more attractive price point for your businesses. So you want to incentivize that your, uh, your sellers are able to actually uh, set a price which is more attractive for, uh, volume uh, for volume selling. And for your purchasers, for your buyers, you want to incentivize volume buying. So uh, you have to keep in mind that business pricing is something that you set as a product price when you do your retail price, but we expect the business price to be smaller or at least equal to the retail price for the product you use. Now we have a constraint in SP API that does not let you have the business price greater than the price you set for your consumer market. So that is the key to understanding that your business price has to be lesser or equal to the price you're setting for the product for the B2C market. To uh, encourage uh, uh, volume purchasing, uh, we have the concept of quantity discounts. You can imagine that the more you want to sell, your, your, um, uh, your buyers are going to expect um, discounts for uh, you know, multiple quantities. So for example, if you sell one or 10 or 30 or 50, your buyers expect to have a very crisp, sharp price there. So a combination of both, if, if you have, if you configured these two, you have a better chance for your seller to be the featured offer for the particular product. Now, uh, as I mentioned that uh, there is uh, uh, Amazon business, the use cases that I mentioned before and I'm going to cover, most of them are actually already covered using a subset of SP API. So for business price and quantity discounts, it is a part of the listing feeds API, and there are certain fields in there, and you can intuitively identify them by their names, which are business price, and then we have bands for quantity pricing. So you can find them in the, in the relevant um, schemas. Uh, moving on to uh, using business pricing and quantity discounts, how do you create a pricing engine that lets you, um, uh, lets you take advantage of, uh, uh, of using notifications and set dynamic pricing for your products? So a lot of you coming from a B2C background might have already used any offer change notification. And in the context of B2B, the one thing that changes here is that in addition to subscribing on a single ASIN, because we have the concept of uh, a multiple quantities, you can actually subscribe to a set of predefined tiers, volume discount tiers. So for example, you can subscribe to a change in notification for a featured offer on an ASIN or any of the top 20 featured offer in ASIN, but also actually to another, um, uh, to basically a, another tier of multi, uh, multi discounts. So for example, here we have uh, seven predefined quantity tiers, and you can ask for a notification, for example, for a change in price of 10 quality discount tier. You typically use any offer change notification in combination with the pull pricing APIs. So if you have dealt with product pricing APIs, you know that it gives you granular information at the level of competitive pricing, listings offers, items offers, and pricing, and their batch counterparts. But then, uh, when it comes to B2B, we are adding another level of detail, giving you that same granularity of information at the level of uh, business pricing and quantity discounts. And these can be used by first time sellers to have a competitive pricing. So if you're a new, if you are bringing in new sellers, then the sellers would like to, would like your guidance, your application should be able to get them a first good starting price and then if the sellers are experienced and they want to use a repricing partner, then your applications should be able to actually harness these, uh, uh, the APIs mentioned here to give them a very competitive price. Uh, as I mentioned that these are the same APIs as we use for B2C. There are a couple of query parameters, uh, offer type and customer type in these APIs, in these operations rather, that let you distinguish between B2C and B2B. So offer type and customer type, as I mentioned here, are, uh, are uh, by default B2C 
or consumer, but you can override them to be B2B or B business for your B2B calls. Talking about recommendations, so for your sellers, what is also important in the context of B2B is that they would like to actually understand what they are missing out and what they should be selling. So the first report type here is the product opportunities recommended for you. These are the products that are actually listed on Amazon and uh, the, we, you can actually create an application that fetches the report. You can automate the process, uh, giving your sellers 10,000 recommendations in one go. And these recommendations are based on customer demand signals married with the current product listings of the sellers. So this gives, you, this gives your sellers a way to uh, get into uh, new categories and brands. The other product opportunities report that is uh, available for B2B uh, sellers is for recommendations or opportunities for products that are not yet on Amazon. And these are actually essentially coming from keyword searches that do not return a product that is being sold on Amazon, essentially giving your sellers the opportunity to be a first mover in the market. Now, uh, the other, uh, for, uh, for B2B sales and traffic report, just like the consumer, uh, uh, B2C consumer reports, the sales report gets you the revenues, the revenue for the sellers in addition to number of orders, claim amounts, and for traffic, you are able to get your uh, page detail view metrics along with the percentage of the featured offer or the buy box for your entire catalog, and you can aggregate it on the ASIN level. Multi-location inventory is yet another use case you want to enable for your sellers. It uh, eliminates the need for uh, the sellers to maintain shipping templates. So what it lets you do is to configure the inventory for each, uh, each product at every, lo every warehouse location, and it lets you provide the seller with uh, accurate and a better educated delivery promise depending on the, inv depending on the warehouse location that is closest to closest to the customer and is carrying the inventory. Uh, we, as uh, um, one of the earlier sessions, you saw this API supply source and you use this in conjunction with listing and order fulfillment feed to enable this use case. Delivery experience for uh, B2B customers is pretty much the same as B2C when it comes to on-time, fast delivery, successful on first attempt. Uh, the, the subtle difference is that uh, business customers, they want uh, you to adhere to some delivery instructions. Uh, essentially, in terms of businesses are operating on certain days and certain hours, and very often they have delivery areas in their offices or locations where they want their packages to be delivered. So in order to uh, enable that, in the orders API, you have a few fields for uh, uh, business hours, business days, and delivery instructions that enable you to uh, give this information uh, so, so you have a better delivery experience for your business customers. And you enable orders API is always used together with buy shipping API to enable this. Uh, last but not the least is the package hierarchy. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a unique case for business to business because not only are you interested in selling single units, but actually you want to have, you will be selling case packs, you will be uh, actually having entire pellets of your products. Now, the Amazon Bulk Services 3P program, it started the concept of uh, what is known as a package hierarchy templates, and the listings API has now incorporated this as a part of the API itself so the sellers can link the case packs and pellets, the essence of the case packs and pellets with smaller packs or each or the smallest ASIN for that particular product. It leads to improved discoverability, uh, detailed page customer experience, and a better bulk pricing guidance. Uh, as I mentioned, that listings API is, uh, is uh, uh, has the right attributes for you to configure these and to link uh, the different units of your packaging. Uh, which brings me to uh, 
the last point, and I know that this was a lightning talk. I tried to cover a number of use cases that are very relevant for business to business. Uh, we want you to actually be involved with our Amazon business journey. Uh, it's, and I know that this presentation is easier said than done. You will face a few challenges on the way. And that is the reason I wanted to point out that please come work with us. Uh, we can be reached at integration services at amazon.com. So our team is a group of solution architects and integration project managers. Uh, we are looking forward to working with you. And there is a distinct advantage that I would like to call out is that uh, uh, if you adopt uh, Amazon business feature, then you have the opportunity to be featured on the Seller Central page of B2B Central. And this is something that is visited by our, your sellers, our sellers, to actually come and explore the integration options they have for Amazon business uh, application providers. So with that, actually, I would like to wrap up the talk. And I know we don't have a Q&A for this session, but please do reach out to us at integration services at amazon.com. Uh, thanks again for your time and patience. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.